All right, tell the other champs today, I'm going to be turning this Lenovo Legion 7i with the i7 into an i9 and even beyond an i9, yes. I have seen some scores from Cinebench from i9 processors, it may be laptop specific, but even for a Legion 7i, that they don't get the scores that I'm going to get with this in Cinebench, and they have i9s, okay? If we have a look at Cinebench, here's a couple of scores here. Here is just one I've done. Now, I've actually done two different things here, two different setups for the single core and actually for the multi-core. Now, I can pretty much get 15,000 without undervolting, okay? That is with this 11800H. Now, that is like 1,500 more than stock, and this is multi-core I'm talking about, and about 1,500 more than even the Ryzen 5900HX. And you can do it without undervolting. You can get around that 15,000, 49, 15,000, but with undervolting, you can get more, right? And even that single core. You're talking in the 1400s with the 11800 stock and even the 5900 HX stock, 1600. Wow, that is just super fast, all right? <laughs> fastest single core, fastest multi-core I've had in a laptop apart from ones that had the sort of desktop processors in it. So this thing can boogie, we can get some extra performance. We can turn our i7 into an i9 and beyond because the stock i9 will not even do these scores in this same laptop, the Legion 7i. And this can be done on any laptop it doesn't have to be this legion 7i it can be done on any intel laptop where undervolting can be unlocked with the bios sometimes in xtu sometimes in bios this one we're using intel xtu so you just got to download and install that and you know you just search for it if you want it right so you just type intel xtu there you go you click on that you install it once we install it let's have a look so i'm going to open up cinebench now and I'm actually recording this on the Mac. I don't know, this may affect it because I'm using the HDMI now and yeah, may affect things here. But anyway, what you can see here is an overview. I have 64 gigs RAM. I'll leave a link in the description for recommended RAM and SSDs to upgrade your 7i or any laptop. But yeah, I've got 64 gigs in here. People were asking, can you do it? Yes, you can do it. This is the 11800H i7, not i9, but we're going to make it perform like an i9. And what you would do is basically, the first thing you'll do here is you'll see it's locked to 4.2 gigahertz. That's this thing here, all right? So if I just drop down this arrow, it's limited to 4.2 all cores. That's what this 11800 is limited to. Now, even the i9, let's just say it can do 4.8 all cores. It's going to be limited by power limit and thermals, okay? So if I just want the full performance, I just go to 4.6. Now this will go 4.6 all cores. I apply. There you go. It's applied. And that's it. That's all I have to do. Now, a lot of this will be chip specific, but if you just leave it like that, you're going to get extra performance for all core performance. You can actually increase the single core. So how fast you want the single cores to go? My preset, my perfect preset is here. It's minus 50 undervolt, and I can go more, but I'll just show you the values of my preset. And there you can see 4.6. I have an undervolt top right hand corner there of minus 50 i can go more than that i've increased the single core to 4.8 the second core to 4.7 and just left the rest stock and this is perfectly fine so i'll just go back to the default values now and now we're just going to go for gold all right so i can just go to 4.6 apply that and now i should get 4.6 all cores now this is such a good laptop has so much power it will probably do 4.5 for most of the test limited by the power here 135 watt and the power limit one here limited by 90 watts and even if i just left it now it would nearly do 15,000, but not quite so that's multi-core 15,000. but we're going to go for gold and now i'm going to do a quick undervolt i know this can do 100 undervolt although it's not 100 percent stable but we'll do minus 100 and we'll see how we go here we'll apply that and what i want to do here is change this secondary turbo boost so this is where it will settle down to the amount of wattage we want to increase that we don't want 90 watts we want to increase it to i would say with a minus 100 millivolts i know it's about 115 watts or something like that so we'll just increase it to uh 150 we'll, we'll go 135 watts okay oh, 136 really it doesn't matter we'll just apply that and if we look in the bottom right hand corner you can see how many watts we pull in and you can see the frequency okay so we'll just run cinebench now multi-score all right so we've got cinebench up 
and we're going to run this minus 100 millivolts we've got 4.6 as maximum frequency that's what this is locked to if you have an i9 you'll be able to unlock it to more an i9 i think an i9 will do 4.8 all cores um, you won't be able to do more with an i9 because the limitation will be thermals and wattage okay so you watch how much wattage this is let's run this multi-core and bottom right hand corner you need to be looking at okay and as you can see here we are pulling 112 watts now that's because it has that minus 100 millivolts it is doing 4.6 the maximum this will do sorry so you know if you have an i9 it can do 4.8 but it's going to be using more wattage maybe you need an undervolt and maybe you don't i don't know you might hear some fan noises in a sec so if we just go through this we can see we're still at 4.6 it's going to stay 4.6 the whole way and 112 watts the whole way no problems there whatsoever and we'll just get to the end of this you see the temperatures are pretty good too 88 degrees and that's 4.6 it's only supposed to be 4.2 so we increased the frequency by 400 megahertz and here we go boom 14964 now I've shown you before you can do over 15,000 with this no problem now if you don't undervolt it and you just leave it 4.6 just leave the wattage alone so that's these things just leave them alone and the thermals and the wattage will guide it through it'll do about 4.5 4.6 because you're using a lot more power because it's not undervolted that's why I'm saying the i9 won't be much faster the wattage and power heat Will be the limiting factor there what about that single core score how did i get the single core score now with single core you don't want to be undervolting you definitely want to be returning to stock so that's zero there we'll apply that and what i've done is basically just change these so first core to five gigahertz second core to five gigahertz third core to 4.8 fourth core to 4.7 and then i just left it okay and then i applied the reason why you don't want to undervolt is it'll just crash at those five gigahertz frequencies it it won't like being undervolted it will just crash so if i just apply that hopefully this applies okay it hasn't crashed and you'll see here max frequency bottom right hand corner i'm not going to make you suffer the pain of doing a whole single core run but <laughs> oh okay so in that case we went too far um maybe i should just drop one of those frequencies down i can guarantee you it can do that um no problems now as you saw there it crashed it restarted no no drama right it's just gone back to whatever my settings were before before i applied them so you know don't worry about undervolting you can test this for yourself but this is stock as you can see here 4.2 was the limit we went to 4.6 now what i've done there is basically if i go to my profiles my my best profile is this one this is going to be different for all your sort of laptops every chip is different so if i just apply that what basically that is is 4.6 for all cores and if i go down here I just put 4.8 the first core, 4.7, then 4.6666 for the rest of the cores, minus 50 undervolt, and I just increased the uh, PL1 to basically 95 watts. And that's pretty much perfect for me. I did increase this to 145 watts, you don't need to. Um, that's up to you. But again, I'll try that single core again. I'll just get rid of the undervolt. So this is stock. We'll just change this again we'll change this to 4.6 and so this isn't undervolted at all and we'll go here to single core we'll change the first one to five gigahertz we'll just go there five gigahertz second one to 4.9 third one to 4.7 and then 4.6 blah 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 we'll just apply that I think this will work no problem this will be stable because we're not undervolting and we'll just run that single core the single core is the test that's where it's probably going to crash you'll notice here under the turbo the wattage i haven't touched it this is stock and we'll just run that single core and bottom right hand corner look for how fast it is and there you can see it's doing 4.7 4.7 4 4.8 4.85 there we got to and that just and that just depends how much 
um, use this derivative because even though this is a single core test, 4.8, you can see there, went to 4.8, 4.84, so nearly 4.9. Um, it, it will still have other threads bouncing around so it's not a hundred percent true just single core it is using multiple cores but you can see there i've had it unlocked to five gigahertz i don't want to do it go too aggressive and i don't want it to crash again yes if you're increasing these uh single core frequencies so active core one active core two active core three you definitely do not want to be under vaulting. All this is trial and error. Just try increasing it to 4.6 if you have 11800H. Just try 4.6 and increasing the single core like this, 5, 4.9, 4.7, whatever. Actually, I should have put that 4.8, but it doesn't matter. Um, and just keep it stock. You can try then under vaulting too. And your mileage may vary. Start in small increments. So something like that, start there, minus 25 millivolts and, you know, go from there, test. If it's stable, you know, you're right to go. But anyway, maximum performance you get here. Let me know how you guys go. It's great when there's a laptop that is unlocked and you can do this. But um, yeah, catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho. Oh, one bonus thing is you definitely, if you crash, you definitely want to clean up your drive. So watch here i'm just going to clean up my drive so i'll go through the process of cleaning the drive and see here the system memory dumps you want to be deleting them because every time you crash it's just going to dump all this you know it's trying to save everything that's on your computer you've got to get rid of that crap after you you know you blue screen so anyway catch you in the next one tally ho